in this case silicon is a material which you simply could not make pure enough until 1960 in order to make this device go now I learned about the purity of a silicon in uh, uh, an interesting way so this was right around uh, the turn of last century uh, when I was a beginning graduate student, as Mike said, I was a graduate student at Cornell University. I was a new immigrant to the US. I didn't have many friends. And I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I was in the physics department. I had visited the accelerator. I found it a really intimidating place. And I was trying to figure out what exactly I was going to do uh, as a physicist. So, you know, as a nerd, what does one do? One goes to the library. And I said, I went to the library and I said, well, I'm here to do a PhD. I must see what kind of PhDs people have done from this institution. And so I said, I'm going to be very systematic about this. I'm going to go to the first PhD that I find in the library. I'm going to read this PhD and I'm going to learn what this person did and it so turns out that the very first PhD thesis that I found actually had a pro profound impact on me so it was uh, written by a lady which is actually quite an innovation in, in those days all in off of itself uh, Miss Frances Wick this is her PhD thesis 1908 which is the first thesis I could find there were lots of amazing things about this PhD thesis that I still remember very, very vividly. So the first thing I looked at this PhD thesis and it was all of six pages long. <laughs> how many of you have a PhD or how many of you have seen a PhD thesis? Perhaps you have sons or daughters or brothers or sisters who've, who've had PhDs. So let me tell you that my PhD thesis was about 400 pages long and I don't even think it was all that long on, on the scale of PhD thesis. So as soon as I saw this PhD thesis, I said, well, this, this, this doesn't sound all that bad. Maybe I can do this thing. <laughs> So I started to read about what Miss Wick had done and what Miss Wick had done was she had measured properties of silicon, silicon that was available as of 1900-1908 and uh, so in her thesis another wonderful thing in this thesis was that it had absolutely no illustrations whatsoever and this, this sounded great to me because I didn't know how to use the computer really and the whole business of illustrations just terrified me. So I, I read the thesis and it said about the crystals, this is not her crystal, I got this from Wikipedia. It said that the silicon crystals that were obtained were free of any visual imperfections. So in those days that's the way they decided whether a crystal was good or a crystal was not good. They looked at it and they said, well, it looks good. <laughs> Okay, but Ms. Wick did a little more in order to actually write her PhD thesis. She came up with a very nice way to quantify how many defects there were in silicon. And she did a very famous experiment called the Hall Effect. Um, the Hall Effect is something that's actually used all over the place these days. This is how this experiment works. Um, imagine you have a material and in this material you flow a current. So in this, in this particular picture, the current is flowing from here to here and since electrons are negatively charged, this means that electrons are flowing in this device starting from this end and they're going to the other end. Now imagine that you have a magnetic field that is perpendicular to the sample, so it points up and down. If you have such a magnetic field, then basic physics tells you that an electron which is moving in this direction, when it sees a magnetic field, starts to get bent. This is called the famous Lorentz force. And the electron, instead of going straight, starts to accumulate on one side of the sample. When you have more electrons on one side of the sample versus the other, it's as if your sample is a little battery, so it develops a little voltage. And this voltage is called a Hall voltage. Now the key thing that Miss Wick realized was that every single defect that there was in silicon, you had one extra electron. So by doing this experiment, by measuring the Hall voltage, she could actually tell how many defects there were in silicon. And I read this and I said, wow, this is wonderful. So, so she looked at the silicon, she couldn't tell how good or bad the silicon was. And she came up with this experiment and then she actually could measure uh, how many defects there were. 
it turns out that this is actually incredibly sensitive to temperature so in her experiment as of those days she she did her experiment at four temperatures she used ice which was zero degrees she used boiling water and she used two mixtures of ice and water which she optimistically in my opinion called 25 degrees and 75 degrees celsius i didn't quite see how she had figured that out she didn't really explain it in her thesis and all of this sounded fantastic to me she had discovered something really nice something profound and she'd done it with what looked to me like very basic equipment and at that time i was quite scared of, of accelerators so i said well this is where i'm going wonderful so let's now fast forward so this is circa a few years ago and you ask what does silicon look like today today silicon is grown in in factories if you have a billion dollars you can build one of these factories